This is Witches, Bitches, and Dead People with Intuitive Oracle, Jamie Hearn. Jamie stirs the cauldron with witches, shamans, healers, psychics, and mediums who bravely share their power and give you insight into what conversations with dead people really look like. It's probably not what you think. Sometimes hilarious, sometimes macabre, and always informative. Hello and welcome back to Witches, Bitches, and Dead People. I'm Jamie Hearn, and I'm super excited to stir the pot today with Geraldine Crane. She is a serene spiritual empowerment guide. She works with women who have had a difficult, harmful, or toxic relationship with their mothers to realize their worth, find peace, and develop a loving relationship with themselves. And in doing so, develop happier, healthier relationships with all areas of their lives. Geraldine uses serene spiritual coaching and hypnotherapy to help them to reconnect with their true selves, their inner divinity, and their inner resilience, and the love of their spirit guides. Geraldine's journey with spiritual connection started over 20 years ago. While she has had an interest in spirituality since being a child, it wasn't until she joined a spiritual development group at 19 that she discovered her, her ability to connect with spirit guides. While part of this group, Geraldine had some amazing spiritual experiences, but her connection went even deeper when at the age of 39, she trained as a hypnotherapist. This is when her professional career as a probation officer, substance misuse worker, and later domestic abuse recovery worker came together with her personal experience of a deeply harmful relationship with her mom, with whom she cut contact five years ago. And her spiritual connection, as she developed her serene spiritual way of using hypnotherapy, coaching, and mentoring to help other women to heal their mother wounds with the love of the universe. In other words, helping them to connect with their inner divinity in their spirit guides, angels, and past loved ones, so they can realize how amazing they are and start loving and accepting themselves. Geraldine absolutely loves her work and she has had amazing spiritual experiences along the way, which she would love to share. So let's start sharing them. <laughs> <laughs> it's an amazing body of work you have. Mm. And I think your journey starting so profoundly at 19 is really amazing also because I'm 45. I see kids who could be my children. That's why I call them kids exploring concepts mm. that I didn't even have awareness of at that age. So I love that you are on this path so young. Yeah. And it wasn't a path that was, um, especially in England, which is where I am, was not really socially acceptable I was a weird kid <laughs> like, <laughs> I was listening to Wayne Dyer and Louise Hay when I was in my early teens you know and things like that so I didn't really I would say I've really deeply gone into it in the last five you know six years but I've been aware of the presence and actually ironically the person who introduced me to all this stuff is my mom it's so yeah and the you know whilst I talk about I had I had a deeply harmful relationship with my mom I also have a lot I'm very very grateful to her for because she did introduce me to spirituality she did introduce me to amazing spiritual teachers the harm came in my relationship through her with us being an enmeshed and her seeing me as an extension of her and when I tried to have a life of my own opinions of my own she got very fearful and that fear led to, to control and guilt tripping and manipulation and, and and all sorts of things so that's when it got really deeply harmful but she did bring me things um which I am very grateful for and one of those is my spirituality um but as I say I didn't I, I was aware of spirituality I even had I remember even if, I must have been 15 and being aware of an energy at the end of my bed I remember it as a dark figure but in no way did I feel scared I must have been just going in or just coming out of sleep but I just remember this 
instead of a tingling going up the spine when you get cold, it kind of went, instead of, it kind of usually a tingle, it goes down your spine, don't you? And it makes you cold or feel a bit fearful. This came the other way. It came up my spine. It was warm and I just felt loved. I felt mm. deeply loved. Um, oh. And I had that experience before I joined the development course. But once I joined the development group, I discovered a particular I, want, I don't even like to say talent or skill because I think anybody can do this, but I just, it's what came easiest to me was connecting with spirit guides. Um, and I'm so grateful for that because when I did cut contact with my mom, whilst I had a lot of support around me, which a lot of women I work with don't, I was very blessed to have a very supportive husband and my family. And, you know, I was I was very, very blessed through the process, but it's still an extremely lonely, hard, emotional time. You know, there's every emotion comes. Yeah, there's anger, grief, um, deep sadness, um, pain. There's so much guilt that comes up. But my connection with my spirit guides enabled me to get their support and their love and their love the love that you get from spirit guides is not like anything you experience on a human level it's not a, it's not an emotion that just comes and goes it's a complete state of being and it's so beautiful that it cannot help but help you heal mm. and i also I got a lot of messages from them of reassurance of you are doing the right thing. You do need to stay away from her in this life. You will be back together and you will, you know, you have been together before you will be together again. And that closeness that you have felt, cause I used to think the sun shone out of her and my, my whole life revolved around her. So it was, there was a lot of grief when I had to pull away because it was getting so harmful for me. And there was a lot of reassurance of, that connection is there. It's not false and it will be there for you again. But right now you two need to learn to be apart from one another and you are doing the right thing for yourself and your family. And it became kind of obvious as, as I dived into it and I've my business has started growing that, that this is my path. This is like, as Wayne Dyer always used to talk about your dharma, you know, and I really really felt this on a really deep, deep level the more and more I explored and healed for myself the more I more I've drawn people to me who have similar wounds I can talk to people in all sorts of places and you can guarantee they'll have mother wounds <laughs> like I just draw yeah. people to me and it's and I know this is because this is what I meant to do so I'm also really grateful to her that oh it sounds crazy but almost for the pain she caused because it's that that's equipped me to help other people and I, I am actually really grateful for that um because I absolutely love what I do but yeah well, the spiritual so connection she directed to me too was yeah oh yeah like this is it it's I was I mean even I've just been on holiday randomly t talking to a, a wonderful woman on holiday and turns out yeah she could contact 20 years ago and she said I don't talk to people about it and this is it whenever I go and do public speaking events I will always get one two three women come up to me afterwards and kind of whispering you know I've had a harmful relationship with my mom or she did this or she did that or I've experienced this or I could contact and it's because there's a there's a stigma around it the shame around it like for some reason it's okay to say yeah. I've got daddy wounds dad did this dad this but if you say it about your mom you know, I have quite a presence on social media. I'm try certainly trying to build one. And I get a lot of trolls. Most of it is, how could you talk about your mother that way? But the thing is, we need to talk about these wounds. One, women are not perfect. And we shouldn't be putting that right. pressure on women and mothers to be perfect. Women, are, My children are going to have some stuff that's going to... I'll have said something wrong at some point. Or, you know, I, I know yeah. that I've caused harm. Especially before I did my own healing, I know I caused some harm. And I'll, the difference is I will take responsibility and I'll hold the space for them. But we need to talk about, we need to remove that stigma to enable people to talk about because the wounds that come from it are deep. 
you know, this people pleasing, feeling responsible for everybody else's well-being, carrying everybody else's problems, not really being able to trust, certainly not being able to trust your own judgment. You know, there's so many deep wounds, hypervigilance, all these things can come from having a harmful relationship with your mom. And if we don't enable people to talk about it honestly and openly, it means they have to keep carrying those wounds on their own. And I'm not willing to allow that. You know, this is, I have a beautiful community of women on uh, Facebook, a free community where it is that safe space to say, ah, she's driving me mad today. And it's OK. <sighs> you know, nobody's going to say you can't talk about your mum like that. It's we get it and we hold that space. But we also hold space for exploring. Well, OK, so how do we rather it's not about blaming mum. It's about, OK, that's happened. So how do we move on and heal? How do we take yeah. responsibility and heal? Absolutely. And I love that perspective. Like, what can I do with this to move forward for me? It's not about mm -hmm. her at that point. No, nope. I mean, and, and I think I honestly don't know anyone who doesn't have some wounding, like you said, from from their mother. Um, mm. My mother has given me much fodder to work on in my own personal development journey I mean yeah I, she still calls what I do that talking to dead people shit so <laughs> I love that thanks for the support mom <laughs> cheers um yeah it's it the, everybody will have some wounds but it is it's that having the freedom to talk about it and know it's I don't hold space for people to just say my my mother was a bitch cow, to, you know, and and just and just blame and and get nasty. Sometimes we have to release a little bit. What I actually find happens more is as people work with me, they suddenly go, "Oh my god, this was actually really abusive or harmful behavior," and they've just normalized it, you know. Yeah. And it, and it's it's actually allowing you and your inner child to admit this wasn't good. This was not good. But the spiritual side of my work I, is even more important because it is that love from spirit that comes through that enables you to see that you, there is nothing you need to do, be or have to be worthy of love. You don't have to prove yourself. You don't have to um, be constantly in service of others. There's one thing that I, I love the spiritual world, but there is sometimes this a deep emphasis on service, which I completely understand. But sometimes when you're dealing with people who've got mother wounds, when they hear service, they hear, I'm going to put myself last and everybody else comes first. And I don't think that's what a lot of the spiritual teachers who talk about service actually mean. But that's the way it'll be heard. Right. Because if your value, your worth has come from your usefulness to your mother, then that is going to go deep. And, and it, yeah. when you connect with your spirit guides, they really show you. Like, you don't, the only service you need to bring to the world is joy and peace. And that, mm. that's it. It's how, not about, go on. How freeing is that concept? Like, mm -hmm. that's my only responsibility is to experience joy and peace. I like that. And the thing is, when you do experience joy and peace, you are serving the world because your consciousness rises. And when your consciousness rises, you start dragging those other buggers out with you. You know, it it benefits everybody. It ripples out of you. So if like I always talk to my clients about be a lighthouse. You make sure your boundary, your, your grounding is good. You make sure your boundaries are firm and you make sure you're taking care of your energy so you shine as bright as you can. That light will help guide others back to home, back to themselves. Mm -hmm. But if you start jumping in all the boats and trying to steer them for them, well, one, you could take them in completely the wrong direction because what you think's right for them is not necessarily what's right. Two, you could disempower them from learning what they needed to learn, which can also make their journey much harder in the end. But three, you're going to dim your own light. And then that is serving nobody. So shine your light, be the lighthouse and shine as bright as you can. And that will serve everybody. And that's when I believe when a lot of spiritual teachers are talking about focus on service. But do it. You have to start with you first. 
and then your light shines out and will serve others. And you naturally, I find, once you do the healing, your ability, your capacity for compassion, your clarity around what is the right action I could, should take, that inspired action, becomes so much clearer anyway. I, I often say to my clients, if you're in a really dark place, don't go around trying to fix other people or fix your stuff. That's like a mechanic going into his garage with all the lights switched off and trying to fix your car. It's it, it, He's going to cause some damage. Or she. I won't be sexist about mechanics. You know, you just wouldn't let them do that. You must not do that. You mustn't try and fix things when you're in a dark place. For anyone, for yourself or anybody else, what you have to do is just do the work or allow yourself, open yourself up to the healing. Do whatever it is that will just help lift your vibration that little bit. And just slowly the lights will start coming on. And that's when you start getting the clarity of, of how you can help others. You can't do it until you've helped yourself first. That's so powerful. And I think a lot of people are on the, on this journey who really need to find some space of clarity and processing internally and they're looking to provide it for other people because mm -hmm. they want to fix things for people mm -hmm. and that it needs to start with them that's totally true yeah I would say 95 if not 100 percent of the women I work with are highly sensitive empathic Quite often, a lot of them are neurodiverse in some way, which tends to cross over as well. Um, and those people feel the emotions of other people, like actually feel them. So when they can feel somebody else in pain, one, they don't want to feel that pain, so they want to try and fix it. But two, they do not want to, you to be, when you can feel someone's pain that much, you're like, oh my God, I don't want you feeling that way. And so they also feel this deep responsibility to fix it. And that's not what this is about. Being highly sensitive is a wonderful, beautiful, beautiful thing. But it does not mean you are responsible for everybody else. What I see as highly sensitive is being an absolute gift because it means we can connect with spirit more easily. We can connect with the love of the universe, divine intelligence, source energy, whatever you want to call it. We can connect with it more easily, which means we can bring more healing to the world. But we have to do the healing of ourselves first. Yeah. And there's there's two things about that. There's, we have to do the healing first because otherwise we're going to just pass wounds on to people and make mistakes but also as we go through that healing we pick up so much wisdom so many tools and skills which make us much better at helping others and if you do it too soon you're gonna make mistakes I remember my spiritual teacher saying to me years ago you need to sort this out your relationship with your mom and heal around this before you can you are destined to do this stuff and to be a light worker and help people heal, but you can't do it until you've done yours. And she was absolutely right, you know. And I some people I've picked don't so much that. up. No, they don't, and, and that's ego coming in. Or I, I like to, I would, I like prefer to call it because I think ego gets mixed up sometimes with a sense of identity and worth. The egoic mind is the way I prefer to phrase it. And yeah, that's that little voice in your head. But uh, it's usually quite critical, but also fearful. Um, and yeah, we don't need to listen. To <laughs> <laughs> it's also realizing that's not you. Yeah. It so, is not you. I would love if you would explain to us what the term serene spiritual empowerment means <laughs> right <laughs> it was really funny when I was first starting up my business trying to find a way to describe what I do is really hard because I I call myself a serene, serene spiritual empowerment guide now serene spiritual means I work with people 
in a very serene, peaceful way. So I'm very gentle in the way that I work in the coaching, mentoring, and in the hypnotherapy. Like hypnotherapy, I would never put somebody in a fast induction because most of the people I work with have had control taken away from them at some point, and I'd be damned if I ever want to make somebody feel that way. And there is no need for it in hypnosis. Yes, it looks very impressive, and some people love it, and it works very well for them, but for the women that I work with, I want them to feel nurtured and cared for, but I also want them to feel in control. So I work with people in a very gentle way, but I also work with them in a way around empowerment. I want them to know that they have control, that they are a powerful divine being that actually does know what's right for them. So when I work with them in hypnosis and coaching, it's not about me telling them what to do. It's about me connecting them with their own inner divinity, their own inner wisdom, their own spirit guides, and them discovering it and working it out for themselves. They connect with that inner wisdom and the intuition and clarity and inspiration and things just start to click and they start finding that peace from within. Or as one, one of my clients said, the warm, fuzzy place in the machine. <laughs> That's how she, how she identifies it. And it's just connecting with that true you within, not the person you've been labeled as and told you were, but that true person, that deep power within. So yeah, serene, spiritual, because obviously the spirit guides are a big part of everything I do and empowerment because it's about putting them absolute center stage of their lives and knowing that they have control part of that empowerment is also making them realize that what happened to them when they were younger or any mistreatment is not their fault but their response to it is absolutely their responsibility so I always say to somebody if you want to stay in victimhood and you want to blame the rest of the world don't come and work with me. <laughs> you ain't ready. You know, you, you've got to be ready to take responsibility and own your shit and, and really start stepping into your power and realizing that you can change your life. Nobody else is going to do it for you. Um, so yeah, that's why there's this long title to what I do, but it's the only way we could kind of encapsulate what it, it's all about. Awesome. I mean, it, the essence of it is so beautiful and compelling. It's got a, a nice comfort to it. So um, I appreciate that explanation that you gave. The hypnosis that you use, is that the space where a lot of your clients feel like their guard is down and they're able to let some of these messages and connections come through that they might not in their normal everyday life? Yeah, the hypnosis, <clears throat> it's it was really funny. When I trained to be a hypnotherapist, at first I started off just doing clinical hypnotherapy. But if I put myself in hypnosis, which is part of your training, spirit get involved anyway. And even when I'm sitting with people, I could feel their guidance of you need to do this with them, you need to do that with them. But eventually it was becoming very obvious that I needed to use hypnosis to help people meet their own guides. Rather than me saying you've got this guide with you and that guide with you. It's so much clearer, so much more powerful when they meet them for themselves. And when I say meet them, some people just feel light, see lights, feel warmth, colors, just have a knowing. Some people absolutely could describe their guide down to a T. Yeah. It's different for everybody depending on, on where they're at. And some people get it very quickly and some people it takes a little bit longer. But what I do see is through the hypnosis, it really puts them in touch with their true self it really allows that true self to come out and it's really lovely because I get to see them a lot of people I work with online and I get to see them online really blossoming and blooming into themselves and so it's so subtle but significant that actually when I talk to them like a, a while later and say do you remember where you were and they're like oh my god I can't remember that person <laughs> you know it, which makes it difficult for me sometimes when I'm trying to get feedback because they can't actually realize how far they've come because they've kind of forgotten the old self but it's also really good you know there's quite a lot of women I've worked with that have really struggled to let people in to talk openly about stuff hypnosis is really wonderful it will only 
your subconscious is deeply protective of you. So it will only do it at a rate and a, and a level that you feel able to do, but it will enable you to open stuff up that you've not felt safe to do before. And I've seen people who've come to me quite, you know, saying, you know, one word answers to things and not and, and quite protective of themselves. Within a few sessions, they're just like, oh, they're relaxed in my chair. They're like leaning back. They're, or I had, I had one lady, I know she won't mind me sharing this. She's in a group that I did when she was first on this group. She would always have a child on a lap which gave her an excuse to, to pull out of the group. She was always really back from the camera, usually in the dark, couldn't see her very well. Now, I've been, you know, she's been working with me a while. When she's in the group, she's you can see her. Like, she's in light. She's really close to the camera. She's really involved. She's animated. It's wonderful. She is absolutely awesome. showing us who she is, and she is such a beautiful soul, as are all the women I work with. I really am very blessed with the women that choose to work with me. It sounds like it's a journey to really getting comfortable with who you are. Mm. It really Wounds, is. Trauma, like beautiful parts, all of it. Mm. Well, if the one person that you would expect to accept you no matter what, to provide safety, to provide a safe space, has not for one reason or another been able or willing to do that, then that's going to really affect your sense of worth, your trust in who you are. I've had women come and work with me and go, I don't know who I am. I don't know what brings me joy. And it's so heartbreaking to see, but they start to discover it. And it's so beautiful when you see that starting to happen. You know, I do a lot of work around inner child work, bringing your inner child yeah. forward and playing with her and, and giving her what she needs and when that happens it's so beautiful so powerful with that. well it's got to be such an honor to witness this becoming that you help these clients to usher in oh th that is that just that's it it is an absolute <laughs> honor you know <clears throat> I always joke um that I make women cry for a living because <laughs> it, they're very rare. Um, the only the women that don't cry are the ones who it's been programmed in very deep that they can't, like they've been punished mm -hmm. or rejected for crying. So it takes some are just simply not able to, or certainly not for a long time. But most women, you know, in every session, there's tears that come. And that is the greatest honor for me is that you feel safe to let those emotions out, that you feel safe to share this space, that you will allow me to guide you through hypnosis, that you trust me, that I will hold that safe space for you. But that's the thing that's most important to me in everything that I do is that you feel safe. So in my mother wound work, I also help people to I have a spiritual development course to help people connect with their spirit guides in all those spaces you've got to feel safe and it's safe to either you know when they're sharing readings or you know you don't need to get it right it's okay this is your safe space to play around and experiment with it when we're doing mother wounds you're safe to say I'm, this isn't what I'm still feeling awful what's going on or you know oh, I've had a you know all stuff that you believe there should be deep shame around. And actually, once you start showing it to the group, you realize you are not on your own and there is no shame at all. Well, that's probably huge for them to know they're not alone and not abandoned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's why, whilst I love doing one to one work, group work can be so powerful because it gives you that community. So I have yeah. a a seven month, seven step course program called the Serene Way. And I've, I've just run it for the first time. And the mm -hmm. women and the community that built up that the last session we did um, an empowerment dance. So we all danced together uh, online um, and it was so beautiful. And that session went on for three hours. It wasn't three hours of dancing. It was talking and then dancing. And by the end, we did not want, none of us wanted to come off the call. None of us. You know, yeah. they're just the connection was so deep. But what I ha have and was always my plan all along was to then have a membership that they are part of. So we still meet every month and will do for as long as they need me or want me. I will be there. That community will be there for awesome. them. Because so if some of our 
If some of our listeners want to learn more about the things that you offer to the world, where can they find Mm you? So the best way to find out exactly what I offer is through my Facebook group, which is completely free. And that's Serene Spiritual and Empowered. Um, And it's I think it's Serene Spiritual and Empowered Healing Mother Wounds with the Love of the Universe. But just search for Serene Spiritual and Empowered. You'll find me. Um, My website has all the details of my one to one work, which is uh, simply just GeraldineCrane.com. you will also see on all my social media that there is a link tree which will show you all my different I have a serene spiritual hub which has all the details of my group work but that link tree has everything on it so all the previous podcasts I've done um it's all on there and we'll leave a link to your link tree so then people can find yeah. all of that information yeah. from you I love link trees so useful <laughs> Yeah, it is. Um, I have loved chatting with you and hearing the details about the work you do. I am so inspired by you. Oh, thank you. I, thank I you for joining just, us today. Yeah, thank you so much. I do love what I do. And if, yeah, if it just helps anyone just to hear that they're not on their own, I'm, I'm yeah, so grateful. I love it. Well, I want to thank all of our listeners for tuning in today, and I will see you next week on Witches, Bitches, and Dead People. Peace and badass magic. Thank you for listening to Witches, Bitches, and Dead People with Jamie Hearn. If you like what you heard, please subscribe, rate, and review at Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen in. 